With the reordable list view, you can move items around within a list view. Next to moving items around, we also want to look at how we can edit item names. And after submitting, they will be saved within our list. If you're new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started by building here a list view, which we then later make reordable. Therefore, I go to the body property and here inside I create a list view and within this list view we map over a list of users and therefore I have here a list of users created and each user has a name and an image URL. And lastly, we get then over this index each individual user and we want to display the user, therefore we create a list tile and within this list tile we simply display the username. And with this we have here a normal list view and now we want to move our list items around. To move an item around you simply replace the list view by a reordable list view. And secondly you go to the build user method and here within your list tile you need to put a key inside. And within this key we put our user object inside which is identifying our list item uniquely. And this is really important to add for your list style, otherwise your reordable list view doesn't work properly. And lastly, we need to add here in this reordable list view this on reorder property. And this callback is every time executed if we move here an item within our list around. And then we get here the old position of this item and the new position of this item. We can already try it out, so I simply drag here this item to another position. However, you see that it is not changing our list. And therefore you also need to manipulate this users list which is displayed here within our item builder. And this is exactly what we do within this on reorder property. And here inside we do two things. First of all, we remove the user from the old index position. And with the statement, the user is then removed from our list of users and we get also this object back which we have removed. And now we want to add this user which we have removed from the old position to the new position and therefore I put the user within our index inside which is here our new index, our new position. And now this example should work. I can drag this here around and you see he is going to the new position. However, if I try to put this user here, for example, to this position, you see it is not working. He is going one location further. And therefore we check here if the new index is bigger than the old index, which means that we are moving our item down. And if this is the case, then we always want to subtract our new index by one. And with this, we get every time the correct position of a user. So we always can long press on an item and then we can move it to a new location and this is working fine. To make our example more beautiful we go to the list tile and here inside I add then within the leading property an image and here I take then this network image which we make rounded with this circle avatar and I also put here a radius inside so that it has here this size. And we also want to increase here the padding around our item so that we have more space around. Next, we also want to remove an item from our list. We will also look at how we can edit an item in our list. And lastly, we will also create the shuffle button to shuffle our list. Let's get started with the shuffling first because this is the easiest one. We simply add within our scaffold a floating action button. And if we click on this floating action button, then we want to shuffle a list and therefore we simply access here our list of users, which we have here at the top. And on this list, you can execute the method shuffle, which will then shuffle your whole list of items. And you also need to make sure that you put the set state around so that the UI gets updated. And with this, we have here this button at the bottom. And every time if we click here on this button, you see that the items are shuffled. Within each list style we have here two buttons at the end which we want to create right now. With the one button you can delete this item and with the other one you can edit this name. Therefore I simply go here to this list style which is displaying here an individual item. And here you have the trailing property and here inside we put then an icon button with this delete icon. And if we click on this delete icon, then we want to remove our item from the list. And therefore I put here the index inside of this item, which we want to remove. 
Now we create this remove method and here we get then the index which we want to remove. And therefore we simply call here on our users list this method remove add and here inside you need to supply the index of the item which you want to remove from the list. And lastly you need to call the set state to update your UI. And now we have here this delete button at the end and if we click on this button you see he has deleted the user which we have selected. And lastly we want to create an edit icon and then we have here this pop-up where we can change the name of the user. Let's go to our trailing property where we have created our first icon and now we also want to wrap here a row around and inside of the row we add another icon button which has then here this edit icon. And if we click on this button then we want to edit our username and put here the index of the item which we have selected. Now we want to create this edit method and here inside we want to show a dialog and within this dialog we want to display our username and therefore we have here this index and go over our users list to get the user which we have selected. And then we create here an alert dialog and within this alert dialog we create a text form field so that we can put our username inside and also can edit this username. And as an initial value we put then the user.name inside and we also override here this on change property and every time if we then change our text field then we put this new name inside of our user.name. And with this we have here this edit button and if I click on this button you see that we have here this text field and I also can change here the text. And now if I click here on this done button you see that he is not hiding our dialog and therefore you also can put here this on field submitted inside and every time if we submit here this field then we also want to call navigator.pop to hide here our dialog again. And with this we can now click here every time on this done field and he will also hide the dialogue. And of course we can always change here the name and then click on done and the name is automatically changed within our list item.